This is a picture of Babe Stovall uh, in the spring of 1974 in Jackson Square. And it was taken about six months before his death. And, and because of that, I'm suggesting that this is probably um, Babe Stovall's last recording. He was a fixture on the New Orleans street scene in the 60s and early 70s. He was born in Mississippi in 1907, started playing music at an early age, and earned his chops with some of the Delta blues greats like Tommy Johnson. From the 1960s on, he was a fixture on the street music scene. He, he enjoyed playing in, in the parks. A little backstory as to how this recording was made. I was a young radio reporter in New Orleans, at, working at WNOE. A colleague and I saw a newspaper item uh, in the Times-Picayune about Babe, who was being hassled by the cops. Uh, so we decided to do a story and check it out, and we ended up um, spending several hours with him when we went to the park to see if the cops would show up. So, um, a, a little shameless plug here, I wrote a short uh, e-book based on this tape. It's called A Day in the Park with Babe Stovall. It's available at Amazon.com for 99 cents. So um, here's the uh, recording. When the, what the police told me, first started, uh, the police name was George. And uh, so I see a whole lot of, you know, white friends playing around in the square. And uh, so when George then told me that he come to me. He told me to might stop playing in the square, I'd either get me a permit. But there's no such thing as a permit. Yeah. And uh, so I told him, well, uh, one Friday evening. I said, well, I said, uh, I said, how much permit cost? He said, he didn't know. So I had to go to, over here to the city hall, city hall and get, get me a permit. I said, well, I said, I'll go see about one. So I was playing out there in the square then. So he said, you better go see about it this evening because you got to be one to be playing back out here Saturday. I said, well, I said, I'd be playing out here. Something don't happen. I'm sure. I said, well, I'll go see about it. I got up and went out on Decatur Street. And I got on me a phone. And I called over there. And I asked, I said, how much a permit cost? He said, permit for what? I said, I'm playing music. He said, what you playing? I said, just nothing but a guitar. He said, you ain't got no mic and nothing to him, no. He said, well, he says, uh, you can't get no permit for playing a guitar out in the square. Oh, sure. He says, okay. If I told him I couldn't I wouldn't use no mic or nothing, and no foam, nothing. Just no, that's cold over there. He said, no, I said, we can't sell you no mic. I'll sell you no amplifier, nothing. I told him, thank you. So I went back and told him and George about it. So he told me then to stop playing out there in the square. So I just kept on playing until after the man had told me that I couldn't get no mic or nothing. And so I just kept on playing. And I kept on playing. He passed by me. And uh after he went out of business, I don't know what they done with him, but he left. I reckon he must be quit. And, uh, so, yeah. Are you going to be playing in the park this Saturday? I don't think so. Unless not I'd get more permission. And, uh. I mean, you're not going to play in the park because the police won't let you, is that right? No, they they, 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 just, they said nothing else to me. I've been playing out there in the park a little bit, you know. So, 
Ever since well, as I've been playing out there, me and David, me and his white friend, he plays a harmonica and I play the guitar. And uh, he he was out there when the police stopped me, you know. And so uh, we was uh, going to try to, you know, have something done about it, you know. Again, you know, but we ain't got nothing done yet. Are you afraid to go play in the park until you get this whole thing cleared up? No. No, it's good going out there playing. <laughs> well, have they ever threatened to arrest you while, while you're playing, or did they just tell well, you? Well, they told, they told me, they told me, this is, uh, if you catch me playing back out there again, I might be put in jail. What law, what, what were they going to arrest you for, and what was the charge? Because I had my guitar case open. And he said they couldn't arrest me and put money, throw money in my guitar case. Oh, yeah, you, you could, you could. Case open, right. And so people throw money into the case. Right. You're not asking for it, but they just throw money into that's, the case because right. you have it open there. Right. And uh, so that that's sort of, uh, they have a possibly some some law that uh, that you're not, not exactly panhandling or whatever, but just people are giving you money. No, I wasn't after nobody. No. Right, right. Well, people just throwing the money in there because I'm I'm playing music, you know. And they just throw money in there, you know, and try to help me out, you know. So he told me I had to quit that. Um, I think about that. Well, I don't think there's no, there's no gift of us playing in the park for us, that. Because uh, we ain't starving nobody. And they ain't bothering nobody. And they ain't begging for no money. What money give us, the people throw it to us, put them, uh, run up there and hand, them to, hand it to me. Now, I ain't begging for it. I ain't begging for, ask them for nothing. So I don't know. Why do you think, why do you think the police... When did you first start playing music? Well, when I first started, oh, been about 15 years. How did you get started? Just started to play and practice, and keep on fooling with a guitar. Where did you get your first guitar? I swapped uh, a pig and got it. You swapped a pig? Right. You think it was a good deal? Oh, yeah, because I liked the guitar. And I, and, I, and I wanted to keep the pig and I wanted to get rid of them, but I, I figured I could make more out than a guitar than I could trying to keep that pig. Because I had to feed him if I kept him. Who did you learn music from? Did you sort well, that's of learn? Any, that's anything that I hear other people play, I could play it. Mm -hmm. Who are some, in your opinion, who? Where you gonna play now, B? I'm gonna play a song for these gentlemen right here. The police come by, but you and the steel yard wasn't here. He come by and kept walking, though he didn't stop. I don't know what happened.
That's your paper? You want to look at it? Huh? And I ain't beholden with nobody about nothing. And uh, anybody that says, if they don't like what I do, I just put it down and quit, right? <laughs> right on. So I, I'm a fellow like this. I let, I live and let live. I like to get along with anybody. I don't care who he is. What color is that? That make me no difference. If he's co if he colored, if he if he if he if he carries himself right, I go along with him back. That's all I can do. And I've been for and year. I played all in California, Boston, Providence, Rhode Island, everywhere. Picking this music. Made money too. Do you ever have a similar problem in any one of these other places? Huh? Do you ever have a similar problem in any one of these other places that you've been in, like you've had? People ask you to leave in other places? Nope. Yep. Oh, man. I'm play a spectre for you, okay? Okay. Yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm 66 years old. And uh, I've been drinking wine ever since I was big enough to drink wine. My mother lived to get 99 before she ceased it. Her, my mother lived to get 99 years old before she ceased And uh, she drunk all her days. As far as I know of her, she never just stopped drinking. So, they said the wine was going to kill me, right? It didn't tell you you got to kill me, but you're still, the life lasts longer. But a person take care of himself, right? That's right. When a person take care of himself, he can share anything. Ain't no police been out here today. I don't know what, what cause. Ain't nothing been out here. We we'll meet together. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Right. Say, babe, I want to drink this you boys <laughs> know. The more people that drink wine and the, and the people that do drink wine, right? Because wine was made for people. God even must turn water to wine, didn't he? You turn water to wine. And uh, come on and drink it. Listen, here. don't sit and hold that cup. Pass the cup back over here to me. Because hey. I don't want to sit here and wait on him. <laughs> yeah, what you think you're out, Nate? I'm going to ask you another question. You said Larry Bernstein told y'all about me? Well, I, I've done a whole lot of playing for Larry Bernstein. And he made a gang of albums, records, for me and my brother. My brother did. He died. Been dead about 15 or 16 years now. But before he died, he laid right down on the floor and died. And he played an eight-string mandolin. That's what he played. Tom Stovall. He played an eight-string mandolin. And uh, Larry Bernstein wanted me and Tom both to play for him. Me and Tom went in, uh, in uh, over here by the Preservation Hall. And we played for Tom. Uh, me and Tom played for Larry Bernstein. Larry got that tape and I ain't seen him. And I don't know what the hell he done with it. But I couldn't, I couldn't never see, get, get up with the tape no more. He never would give it back to me. He never would sell it to me. Well, I know he got the tape, I know that. He got the tape. 
tape recorder. He cut had this tape cut on on a tape recorder. Me and my brother Tom playing. Tom singing and I'm playing. But since he's been dead, I can't hardly stand to see him talk by Tom being dead, you know. I can't hardly stand and see it to see him singing there, you know. Because it just goes all over me. But him being dead too, you know, knowing he's dead. So I started to stop playing it. After my brother Tom died, I started to stop playing music. That was when my brother died. That my brother died in, in Picayune. I like stopped playing music on that account. Because I didn't think I had nobody else could play with me as good as he could. So, I just, uh, let's go, let's go along, you know. But plenty of times, a person don't know what, a which way. You don't know how long we gonna stay here, do you? You don't know when you're dead. You die, the plenty of people die, for attention, right? Plenty of people die for attention. Need the attention. But you can rest your own time off. Because I'm right or wrong. I guess you're right. I ain't no guess said, I'm knowing I'm right. You can rest your own time off. When that time come, when God get ready for you, you got he can come to you. Poison can't hide from God, they can't where you go for. Is that right? right? You can't hide from God. God is a mighty God. And he does things. <laughs> he he warns people. He warns people, you know, that that uh, for them to endure with the the scripture. Plenty of people don't know what scripture means. Is that right or wrong? Plenty of people don't know what scripture means. But scripture, that's the only thing, that's the only thing, take care of the people. Now, I've heard so many people right here in New Orleans, dead right now. Got, some of them got burned up, and some of them got drowned, and some of them got killed. <clears throat> who, 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 who done that? It must have been God warned them, right? God warned them and told them, how you down? Come on here.
America, build no guns in the sky, Lord, in the But I could not hold my Zara when they laid her in a grave. When the circle be unbroken in the sky, Lord, in the sky. When the circle be unbroken in the sky, Lord, in the sky. I was standing by my window one warm rainy day when that hearse come. First come rolling, take my dear old mother away. When the circle be unbroken, in the sky, Lord, in the sky. When the circle be unbroken, Thanks.